Hello, good morning to all. Welcome to today's Daily Dose of Market Insights by Oenda. I'm Kelvin Wong here, the Senior Market Analyst of Oenda Asia Pacific. Very good morning. Today is Tuesday, the 16th of January. All right, so before we start, let's take a look at the disclaimer slides first. All right, leverage trading carries a high degree of risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Losses can exit deposits. This presentation is not an offer or solicitation to buy or sell, no financial advice or recommendation for any investment product. As well as any forecast prediction or projection in this presentation is not necessarily indicative of the future or likely performance of the product. This advertisement has not been reviewed by the Monitor Authority Authority of Singapore. All right, so before we jump into the short term technical outlook for today on the various cross assets, that means ranging from the major benchmark stock indices, the major FX pairs, gold, as well as West Texas oil. Let's have a recap of what happened yesterday and in terms of uh, the performance of the broad-based cross assets. So yesterday, we know that the US session is closed for a public holiday. So not much movement on the broad-based asset classes. So uh, we talk about the major stock indices will be almost unchanged yesterday, except with the fact that earlier this Asia session this morning, there's actually a rally in the US uh, dollar. So if you look at the current FX performance across the board right now, as you could see on my screen over here, let me share with you all. Yes, give me a minute to load. Yep. So this is the five day rolling performance of the dollar against the major uh, and a popular traded FX currency. That means the dollar will be the base currency against the Kiwi, against the Aussie, against the CAT, against the Sterling and against the Euro. So what we could see over here is that uh, the Kiwi, the Aussie and the dollar, the Yen, uh, the dollar actually strengthens against these three currency very significantly at the start of today Asia session, uh, especially the Aussie and against the Kiwi. So what we could see over here is that uh, those high beta currency like the Aussie and the Kiwi is actually weakening against the dollar right now. Okay, the reason why because there's actually a kind of a risk uh, of uh, impact on the market right now due to joyous political tension that is actually on the uptick in the Middle Eastern region uh, due, to, due to this uh, ongoing hostility in the Red Sea uh, Iran. So what we could see over here is uh, there's actually uh, merchant, a U.S. merchant vessel, especially an stress over U.S. merchant uh, vessel uh, has been struck. Okay. Uh, it, to, in the Red Sea area. So actually the uh, Hantun militants actually uh, retaliated against the US by striking a US owned commercial vessel. So do you recall, uh, if, we, if you recall that last, uh, late last week, the US together with UK has a joint military airstrike against the uh, Hantun uh, militants uh, in the Red Sea area. So on top of this, on top of that over here is that we do have another uh, conflict near the region as well, where Iran, uh, has actually attacked Israel spy HQ in Iraq and vote more revenge. So what we could see over here is that there's this uh, very complex and fluid situation uh, surrounding the Middle East uh, region. Uh, all in all, it's actually led to this ongoing uh, conflict in uh, 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 in Gaza. That means this ongoing um, hostility between Israel and Hamas that is now uh, trying to drag on or drag in more uh, major st stakeholders uh, into this uh, ongoing conflict. So what we could see over here is that market uh, now is a bit jittery at the start of the Asia session. So we see a bit of risk off uh, on the FX space with the dollar strengthening and also lead to uh, other uh, Asia major stock indices in the red as well, like the likes of Kospi, Taiex, uh, Hansing. Uh, China, uh, even the Singapore STI is all uh, starting the session on a weaker footing uh, with the fact that the Nikkei 225 is only uh, holding on to uh, minor losses. So if you look at the current situation in the Nikkei 225, it's only down negative 0.3% uh, 
versus uh, what we see in uh, the rest of the Asia region, like uh, Taiwan is down negative 0.8%, uh, Kospi is down negative 0.9%, the Hansing tech continue to down negative 1.3%, uh, Hansing negative 1%, and with the uh, surprisingly the China stock market is holding rather firm right now, it's only uh, gaining 0.3%. So overall, right, we see a bit of a uh, negative uh, a feedback loop back into the market at this moment in time. All right, so this is the uh, a key. Uh, we call it a uh, performance of the uh, market and as well as the news, uh, the, the, the news event that I'd like to share with you all that, that is impacting the market right now. And also on top of that, uh, we do have another uh, negative news flow out in the late US, uh, late Asia session yesterday, where uh, we all know that Paidu is one of the China major big tech stock. Uh, actually, they dropped close to 12%, which is the most since 2022. Uh, there was actually a alleged link between Pi2 uh, Ernie AI platform that has a co calibration with the Chinese military PLA. So that actually kind of a spoke uh, joyal political, uh, uh, we call it a tension between the uh, uh, joyal political tension uptick between the US and China. So that's also another negative news flow that is spilling over to the uh, China big tech stocks right now that is dragging down the uh, Hang Seng tech index and as well the Hang Seng index at this juncture while we are speaking. So uh, on top of this, uh, despite the very interestingly, despite the uptick in joyal political risk a premium in the Middle Eastern region, uh, oil prices uh, actually ended almost unchanged yesterday and very similar in today's Asia session right now, there's no major uh, uh, uptick in oil prices. Uh, gold continue to hold firm above the key support level at 2015 and still trading above the 20-day moving average. All right, so that is the key uh, events and uh, we call it a uh, cross-asset performance that I'll share with you all. So now let's straight jump into the short-term technical outlook. Yeah, so on the short-term technical outlook, let's start with the major FX pair first. All right, so let's start with the euro dollar. So over here, uh, let me share my screen. Okay, so let me expand my screen, yeah. So on the euro dollar, yes, even though today's uh, Asia session, it actually tumbled down at the start of Asia session, but still managed to hold above the 50-day moving average, which is the key pivotal support that we highlighted since last week at 1.0890. So still expecting uh, a kind of a range bound configuration on the euro dollar. So as long as 1.0890 key short term pivotal support holds, potentially it could start to see another round of uh, bounce within this range configuration uh, that is in place since the start of this year. So uh, for sure, the near term resistance to watch will be at 110 figure level. So uh, 110 figure level. So we need to see a clearance above 110 figure level, which is this uh, ceiling, near term ceiling over here, before we start to see much more impulses, uh, uh, we call it a uh, up move to test the next resistance at 110.60. So still no change using 1.0890 as my short term pivotal support level, still maintaining that short term bullish bias within this uh, range bound configuration with the near term resistance to watch will be at 110 figure on the euro dollar. Only a clearance uh, hourly close below 1.0890 invalidate this uh, bullish bias to see another leg of corrective uh, decline, minor corrective decline towards the next support level at 1.0820, which is pretty much close to the 200 day moving average. And as well as this medium term ascending channel lower boundary that's in place since 4th of October. 2023 low, we're so confluencing around at the 1.0820 support level. Okay, now sterling dollar. So on the sterling dollar over here, what we could see is that right now it's actually uh, testing the 1.2690 short term pivotal support that we highlighted earlier last yesterday uh, and also this medium term ascending uh, channel uh, lower boundary that's in place since 26 of October 2023 low. So all in all, uh, no change still using 126.90 as my key short term pivotal uh, support level. So I'll be adding on a much more near term uh, resistance today to watch. Okay, we'll be at this level here. Okay, so this is actually uh, yesterday's 
European uh, session high, which is at 127.40. So a clearance above 127.40 will uh, start to see a much more uh, a, a, a recovery uh, to at least retest 128.20, which is the minor swing high of uh, 28 of December 2023 over here. So still maintaining that short-term bullish bias uh, above 126.90, except I added a potential upside trigger level at 1.2740 level for today. Only an hourly close below 126.90 invalidates this uh, recovery scenario on the sterling dollar to kickstart an uh, another down, another minor corrective uh, decline to test the 50-day moving average now confluencing at the support level of 126 figure level. All right. Asia Pacific currency. Let us start with the Aussie dollar. So on the Auss Aussie dollar is rather weak. Uh, so it's break below 66.50 level, short term pivotal support. And right now it's actually uh, also testing the 50 day moving average. And in fact, it's breaking below the 50 day moving average. And uh, already broken down this graphical ascending trend line support, medium term ascending trend line support that I drew from the low of 26 of October 2023. So what we could see over here is that, <coughs> excuse me, it's a potential retracement of this uh, former medium term uptrend that took shape from 26th of October low all the way up to December 2023, 28th of December 2023 high. So the next level to watch right will be somewhere around the 200 day moving average, which is also close to the 50% FIBO retracement of this uh, entire former medium term uh, uptrend move from 26th of October low to 28th of December 2023 high. Okay, so what we do is that uh, given this uh, breakdown of this uh, medium term ascending uh, trend line support and the 50 day moving average that is breaking down as well. So I'll be using 66.55. So earlier this morning, uh, Asia session breakdown 66.55 as my key short term pivotal support level, uh, flipping to a short term bearish bias towards at least the next support level at 6570 slash 6540 rigid okay this region over here which is the 50 percent FIBO retracement at 6570 that i shared with you earlier only an hourly close above 6655 will invalidate this short-term bearish bias to see a squeeze up back towards the 20-day moving average again which is acting as a resistance at 6750 uh, level Okay, so flipping to a bearish bias on the Aussie dollar, given it's at least in the short term, uh, given its weak technical configuration right now. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, uh, dollar yen. Okay, so on the dollar yen over here, what I could see is that it seems to us that right now, since the high of uh, 5th of January, all the way down to the current price action, it seems to be oscillating or evolving within a ascending a bearish ascending wedge configuration that is still evolving at this moment in time with the top of this ascending uh, 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 top of this minor bearish ascending wedge that is acting as a resistance at 14670 that we predefined earlier uh, since last Thursday. So no change using 14670 as my short term pivotal resistance level, which is so close to the downward sloping 50 day moving average. So uh, as long as this 14670 didn't surpass to the upside, Potentially, it could still evolve within this ascending wedge configuration. And right now, it may start to do another test on the lower boundary of this ascending wedge, which is at 14480. All right. So, uh, for so for today, uh, only using 14480 as my uh, support level to watch to maintain this uh, short term bearish outlook. As long as 14670 key short term pivotal uh, resistance is not surpassed to the upside. All right, so uh, so right, right now we could see that it's still churning within this uh, bearish ascending wedge configuration. However, only an hourly close above 14670 then potentially will invalidate this short term bearish outlook within this bearish ascending wedge configuration to see a squeeze up towards the next resistance at 14740 and even potentially 14830 ticks on the dollar yen. All right, so uh, that's pretty much sum up on the FX market. So what you could see on the FX market over here is that it's kind of a bit of a mixed bag over here with Austria, the Aussie dollar uh, now getting weak against the US dollar, whilst the rest of the other currency like the Euro, the sterling is still holding about 
above support on the US dollar and the dollar yen is still remaining uh, below the resistance at 14670 at this juncture. So all in all, uh, we don't, we still don't see a kind of a clear dollar strength coming back into the FX market uh, despite uh, this, uh, we call it this Asia session uh, dollar strengthening uh, moment that we saw earlier due to due to the Middle East uh, geopolitical uh, tension uptick. All right, so now uh, stock indices. So for stock indices, let us start with the, okay, give me a minute, where is my, yeah, start with the Hong Kong. So for Hong Kong over here, right, uh, it's getting really dicey. So what we could see is that uh, right now we have an hourly close already uh, below the 16,100 pivotal uh, support level that we highlighted since last Thursday. So all in all, what I could see is that in the short term, uh, it now starts to flip into a bearish mode as well. If the hourly RSI uh, has a bearish reaction right below the 50 level and hasn't yet, yet, yet hit the oversold region. So all in all, right, what we could see over here is that uh, given the break of the 16,100 pivotal support, we got to respect this ongoing short term bearish tone in the Hong Kong 33 index. So with that, uh, I'll be flipping to a short term bearish bias. So instead of using 16,100 uh, pivotal support level, I'll be flipping it to a pivotal resistance instead. So I'll be tightening it higher using today's Asia session high, which is at 16,200. Okay, given that it has broken down with an hourly close below it. So 16,200 will be my short term pivotal resistance. Uh, looking for a further potential slide in a couple of days uh, from a multi-day perspective to test the next support level at 15,500. So what's 15,500 if you could go to the daily chart? So it's in fact uh, this congestion area over here. Okay, 15,500, not 800, 15,500, pardon me. Okay, so as long as 16,200 is not surpassed to the upside, potentially we could see a short-term bearish bias outlook unfolding on the Hong Kong 33 towards the next support level at 15,500. Only hourly close above 16,200 uh, will negate uh, this bearish uh, outlook to see uh, another round of choppy movement to retest the next resistance level, which is the 20-day moving average that is acting as a resistance at 16,500. All right, so all in all, flipping to a short term bearish bias on the Hong Kong 33 index, given that it has broken down below 16,100 with an hourly close below it right now. Japan 225. Okay, so Japan 225, uh, yesterday we do have two resistance level to watch, which is at 36,050, followed by 36,460 slash 660. So during the uh, European session, uh, it managed to actually surpass 36,050, then thereafter it came down. Uh, due to this risk on risk of uh, we call it a, a, a risk of impact that is taking shape during the Asia session right now. But what's interesting over here is that it managed to shape a bounce, and this bounce actually bounced off the former range resistance, and which is at the thirty-five thousand five hundred slash thirty-five thousand seven hundred level. Okay, so with that right, uh, I don't know why I used to use 35,500 as my short term pivotal support is a bit too tight. So I still remain 35,360, which is my yesterday's uh, pivotal support level. So still maintaining that short term bullish outlook on the Japan 225. All right, or the Nikkei 225 to at least uh, in short term retest yesterday's uh, swing high area. Okay, which is at 36,200 uh, level, 36,200 level. So above 36,200 level sees the next uh, resistance level, which is a, 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 a kind of a key inflection level where after healing this level, we may start to see a much more pronounced corrective pullback because uh, it's actually confluencing with a FIBO extension and as well as the graphical upper limit of this minor selling channel that I drew from the low of 4th of January. All right, so still maintaining that uh, short term bullish bias as long as 35,360 short term pivotal support holds for today. Okay, only an hourly close uh, below 35,360, uh, we'll start to see a co this continuation of this minor corrective pullback to test the next support level in first step at 35,000 level. Okay, so that's for the Japan 225. Okay, German 30. So German 30, no change is still stuck within this uh, neutrality uh, range. 
between 16,790 and 16,560. So still no change, still maintain that neutrality stance or sideway range configuration uh, expectation between 16,790 and 16,560. Only an hourly close below 16,560 will start to see, uh, will start to see uh, 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 we call a trigger uh, of uh, another minor corrective decline towards the next support at 16,440 followed by 16,330, which is the low, which is the 50-day moving average at their support and as well as the lower uh, lower boundary uh, of this ongoing uh, complex expanding wedge configuration that is in place since its all-time high that was a flag out on the 14th of December last year. Okay. Uh, U.S. major benchmark indices. So let us start with the Wall Street 30. So Wall Street 30, yesterday U.S. market is closed, so no much movement. So no change to using 36, 37,380 as my short-term pivotal support level. Still maintaining that short-term bullish outlook at least to retest the current all-time high area at around 37,800. That is acting as a range resistance since late December last year. Okay, only an hourly close below 37,380 uh, negates this bullish tone to kickstart another round of minor corrective decline towards 36,170 in the first step. A breakdown below it exposes 36,810 support level next. Then what's next for the Nasdaq 100? So on the Nasdaq 100, uh, no change. Over here, still holding above the 20-day moving average. So using the 16,660 short-term pivotal support level to maintain this short-term bullish outlook, at least to see a, 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 a retest back to the current all-time high level region, all-time high area at 16,990 in the first step. Only an hourly close below 16,660 uh, potentially kickstart another round of minor corrective decline to test the next support level at 16,500 slash 16,430 level, which is in fact also the 61.8% FIBO retracement of this uh, last push up, all right, from the low of uh, 5th of January to the high of last th Thursday. Okay, it's 61.8% FIBO retracement. Okay, so that's pretty much sum up with the benchmark stock indices. So all in all, right, uh, we see the major benchmark stock indices still holding above their respective short-term pivotal support level with the fact that the weakest will be the Hong Kong 33 breaking below 16,100 in short term and hourly close below it due to this ongoing negative news flow that is uh, impacting the Hong Kong and the China stock market, especially the news flow out from the China big tech stock where Pi2 is being alleged with uh, in calibration with the Chinese military in the usage of its uh, cutting edge AI bot. All right. Now, uh, Go. So for Go, right, it still remains resilient, uh, holding above the 20 day moving average, as I mentioned to you all earlier at the start of this daily dose session. So what we could see here is that it's still holding above the 20 day moving average after a test at the near term range resistance of 2060. Uh, haven't didn't manage to break up above it. So what we could do over here is that I'll be having a much more tighter, tighter key short term pivotal support for today, uh, which is so correspond to the former pullback support here of this uh, minor descending channel resistance that was broken out on last Friday. So now I think it's a pullback support at 2036, also conversing with the minor swing high of 10th of January and the 12th of January now turns into a pullback support level as well. So uh, with a tightened key short-term pivotal support level for today, 2036 still maintaining that short-term bullish outlook. Clearance above, uh, hourly close above uh, 2060 potentially takes us up to see a retest on the 28th of December minus swing high area at 2090 level. Only an hourly close uh, below 2036 will negate this bullish tone to see uh, another round of a much more pronounced minor corrective decline to retest the 50 day moving 50 day moving average acting as a support level at 2015. We also confluence with the minor swing low, the, the swing low area of 12th of January and 16th of December. So still maintaining that short-term bullish outlook on Go XAU slash USD with a tightened key short-term pivotal support for today at 2036. So for WTI crude oil, uh, which is Vex Texas oil, 
uh, pretty much of a sideway movement so far for now, but still managed to hold above the 71 pivotal support level that I highlighted since last uh, Thursday. So this 71 pivotal support confluence with this congestion zone over here, 9th of January and 11th of January, and as well as this minor ascending trend line support that is in place since the low of 13th of December. So as long as 71 uh, figure level short term pivotal support in surplus on the downside, Potentially, uh, West Texas oil could see a churning movement at least to retest its uh, range resistance at 74.95 slash 76.05 level. Okay, only an hourly close below 71 uh, figure level uh, will negate this uh, potential push up within a range configuration to see a further slide to retest in first step the 3rd of January minus swing low area at 69.70. So, net net still overall maintaining that short term bullish. Uh, bias within its range, within its, its uh, uh, short term range configuration, holding above 71 figure level for West Texas oil. All right, so that's pretty much sum up with the short term technical outlook uh, for today. Let me share with you all next is what are the key events and data to look out for for today. So let's take a look at the economic calendar. So for today, uh, do, during the during the European session, we do have uh, unemployment rate data coming up from. Uh, UK, that's for the month of November, not that leading, uh, so that will be out at 3 p.m. Singapore time. And much more important will be the uh, leading Eurozone, uh, 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 Germany as well as the, the aggregate Eurozone uh, economic sentiment index for January. So that's the latest one that is up at 6 p.m. Singapore time. And throughout the US session will be a rather quiet session, except for uh, Canada, uh, they have a core inflation rate uh, for December out at 9.30 p.m. Singapore time. And also not forgetting, uh, right now we are in the midst of the U.S. Uh, Q4 earnings uh, season. Uh, uh, we do have uh, two key uh, U.S. stocks to actually uh, monitor before the start, before the open, before the start of the U.S. session today. So they are roughly up around Singapore time between 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. So we do have uh, Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs, uh, one, two major U.S. financials reporting their Q4 numbers today. So then don't forget, uh, Goldman Sachs also uh, has a huge influence on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is the U.S. Wall Street 30. Why? Because Goldman Sachs is actually the one of the uh, top five key component stocks inside the uh, US Wall Street 30, which is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So something to monitor on that could actually influence the uh, the movement of the US Wall Street 30 index for today. So with that, uh, that's pretty much sum out today's uh, daily dose of market insight. We also come to the 30 minute mark as well. So do have a great day ahead and we shall speak again tomorrow. Thank you.